Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this non-farm payrolls webinar on Friday the 5th of October with me Michael Hewson. I'm Chief Market Analyst here at CMC Markets and I will be spending the next half an hour with you basically talking you through the numbers what my expectations are with respect to the numbers um, but before I get to that I have to go through a little bit of housekeeping first namely the risk warning. Um, so um, Obviously we'll cover that, uh, there's a couple of slides to get through so I'll allow you guys to work your way through that but I think in the context of today's payrolls numbers I think there's an awful lot of been, there's been an awful lot of hype and expectation about this numbers and those of you on social media will know there's been a couple of reports doing the round that people are thinking about a 500k payrolls number. To be quite honest, I think that is highly unlikely and I think maybe, quite possibly, there's been quite a few analysts that may have had a little bit of gin in their cornflakes. That being said, that could come back and bite me, but uh, I would be very, very surprised if we get a non-farm payrolls number two of, of that magnitude. So we've also seen Treasury yields, um, US Treasury yields, move quite aggressively higher over the past few days and that's largely on the back of a slight change I think in terms of um, I think tone is probably the best word that I can describe it a slight change in tone on the part of Jerome Powell um, chairman of the Federal Reserve now a week ago just over a week ago he was quite clear that he saw no signs of significant inflationary pressure when he did his press conference in the wake of the September rate rise and yet in the space of a week um, he's come out with slightly more hawkish tone. They did remove the language with respect to accommodative monetary policy but what he said with respect to the neutral rate which some have estimated to be around about 3% he says that we're a long way from the neutral rate and that's raised the prospect I think in the in the minds of the market that while we'll probably still get a December rate rise I think that is still pretty much nailed on the key question that I think investors had been underestimating was the number of rate rises we're going to get next year and I think that still remains the key unknown nonetheless I think the what I would call the very ambiguous nature of the press conference and the decision in September caused the think markets to get a little bit complacent about the upside in US Treasury yields and I think you saw that reflected in the way that yields moved earlier this week so this is the 10 year that we're looking at and obviously you can see straight away on this candle here of the sharp move higher and obviously we did take out the highs of earlier this year but part you know what has really changed with respect to the economic data and this is the question that I'm asking myself because you look at the inflation numbers the CPI there's another CPI number coming out next week that's still around about 2.5 2.6% .6%. so it's certainly not blowing you know it's certainly not blowing away to the upside and wages growth is still it's still fairly decent it's around about 2.9 percent and I think more than anything else everyone's focusing on the headline payrolls number they're focusing on the wrong area I think irrespective of where today's payrolls number it's not going to change the game when it comes to the direction of the dollar now if we look at the way US 10-year yields have been going over the course of the past two to three years we can see quite clearly we're in an uptrend so yields are going higher there's no indication whatsoever that we're going to start rolling over so I think really the question at the moment is today for the markets is not so much are rates going up how fast are they going up and I think that more than anything is what's driven today's or this week's particular move in US yields when you think about where they were at the beginning of September we were down here we were around about 2.82 percent we're now at 3.2 so that's quite a big move which suggests that while markets are pricing in a rate rise they may be now starting to get too ahead of themselves we're coming into a weekend there's also the fact that um, unless it's a really positive wages number of above three percent I think we've probably come as far as we're likely to 
in the short term. Now that doesn't mean to say that we can't go and see three and a half percent or maybe even four percent next year. I just think that we could well get there and it, it, it may take a little bit longer to play out. Also, there's a big number here with respect to the 200 month moving average. We're pushing right up against it at around about 323, 321 there or thereabouts. So I think for me to get really bullish about the um, yield curve or the US, US Treasury um, 10 year bond yield is we need to see a monthly close above 3.2%. And we haven't been back at this level on the 200 month moving average since 1989. That was the last time we, we hit the 200 month. We're all the way back here. So it's been a long time and I think it's unlikely that we're going to blow through it on the first touch. We may well do, but I'm a little bit sceptical. So I think in terms of the risk trade on this particular, um, on this particular chart, I would be a little bit minded to be reluctant to be overly short US treasuries at this sort of level. So you short, you sell treasuries, yields go up. So US treasuries have been sold off quite aggressively in the past few days. Is there any further downside in them? In terms of risk reward, I would be very reluctant to be aggressively short US treasuries at these sorts of levels, which means there is scope for yields to fall back. So what does that mean? for the US dollar. Well certainly in terms of the dollar index we have moved progressively higher over the course of the past few days but we haven't really been able to get back above 96 and actually what we've seen here is that on this particular candle here we've got a counter-attack candle so we've closed higher we've opened higher and we've closed pretty much unchanged from the previous close so that again suggests that the market may be a little bit a little bit long of dollars which obviously could mean that we could well see a little bit of a dollar sell-off in the event that the data is particularly weak. It's also the Canadian jobs report and a decent number on the Canadian jobs report could well dictate whether or not the Bank of Canada raises rates at its next meeting later this month. For quite some time now I've been of the opinion that the Bank of Canada usually um, tends to move in lockstep with the Fed. Now, that could change if we get a particularly weak Canada jobs report. So for those of you who are listening out for the Canada numbers, I'm going to give you a quick preview of not only the US numbers, but also the Canada numbers as well. So let's first and foremost start with respect to the US numbers. So we got a very good ADP number earlier this week at 230,000 expectations are probably skewed to the upside with respect to expectations for the US number which at the moment the consensus forecast is 185 but even if we come in at 210 or 215 that's probably not going to be particularly dollar positive but it's not going to be dollar negative either I think if we come in the region of anywhere between 170 and 230 on payrolls that's pretty much on consensus and it's pretty much in line with the average over the course of the past few months. So any number there in that window is unlikely to move the dial that much. The key number is wages here. And at the moment, I think you also got to be aware of the effects that Hurricane Florence may well have had on the payrolls numbers as well. That could make the number a little bit unpredictable. And that's why it's important that we don't place an awful lot of emphasis on one month's number. Also keep an eye out for a revision to the August number. Now, August was 201. Um, we're expecting, as I say, 185 to 190 on the headline number. But it's a hu there's a huge consensus, I think, uh, view on where we could and couldn't go. But for me, you know, any all of this stuff is a sideshow. It's the wages numbers that I think are going to be particularly important. And if we see a little bit of a drop back in the wages numbers, I think that could take some of the edge off the dollar bullishness that we've seen thus far this week. Because I think if it hadn't been for the intervention of Jerome Powell and also the comments of Charles Evans of the Chicago Fed, then would we have seen the move higher in yields that we've had this week? And yeah, there are other factors at play this week. Obviously, there's concerns about the China trade situation. There's obviously concerns about what's going on in Italy as well, and that's weighed on the euro. But at the moment, for me, I think with respect to the dollar, any dollar move is likely to be limited to 
although the upside is likely to be limited simply because we've come quite a way already and I think an awful lot of it is already priced in. So th I think for me there's potential for a little bit of a disappointment. Having said that, if we get 3% wages print then obviously the dollar will go up and we will retest the lows for euro dollar of around about 114 and a half. And I think that is likely to be a fairly key support level on the downside. It's also looking a little bit oversold. So looking at 114.5 in support on euro dollar at the moment, currently where it is at the moment, it's in one of those areas that I'm not really minded to buy or sell it. I would wait for a move either higher or lower. And at the moment, I think the bias is for potentially um, a little bit of a limited down move and the upside around about 115.90. I'm not minded to think that we're going to get a significantly big move lower in euro dollar simply because of how far we've come over the course of the past few days and the fact that we're heading into a weekend and I would suggest that you are particularly cautious about um, being overly short euro dollars heading into a weekend given all the geopolitical stuff that's going on at the moment. If we look at cable again that's going to be susceptible to a dollar move that's actually looking fairly decently supported. Um, certainly decent support around the lows that we saw yesterday at around about 130, 129.20 rather. So you've got two twin lows there at 129.20. You've got a fairly bullish daily candle there. Uh, certainly potential to move back towards around about 131.20. Um, that's certainly the level that I'm looking for. It's the highs this week on Monday. So I think that's going to be a very, very key level. Looking at equity markets very, very quickly because um, we've got three minutes we're counting down. Still in a downtrend on the DAX. Have been since June. Not changed my opinion about that at all. It's very much a sell the rally. Though we are approaching a very key support level on the downside around about 12,100. So I think even if you get a payrolls number that's particularly um, negative, I think it's probably not going to affect uh, German markets in any way, shape or form. Also, we saw a big sell-off in the Dow and the S&P last night, but ignore the headlines. OK, look what the price has done. And the price is still within touching distance of all-time highs. So for all of these concerns about high yields and what have you, US investors are still fairly upbeat about the outlook for the S&P. Now, is this a potential double top here on the S&P? Certainly, there's decent resistance through these highs here, around about 2940. So that's a key level to keep an eye out for on the upside. On the downside, obviously yesterday's lows um, around about 28.75. So certainly keep an eye on 28.75 on the S&P 500. What I have been notice noticeable, I think, is how the Russell 2000 has really underperformed the small caps. It has really dropped quite sharply. It's diverged away from the Dow and the S&P. And again, looks like US markets are on course to open a little bit higher. But again, I think there is some evidence that maybe we are starting to top out a little bit. So if we get a very big wages number, then that could actually be equity market negative because it could drive yields up. If we get a number that is probably a little bit on the low side or fairly neutral, then I wouldn't expect to see markets move significantly um, in any way, shape or form. Um, dollar CAD quickly um, before we go. That, again, um, if the payrolls disappoints, um, then we could well see CAD start to head back towards around about uh, the this 50-day this moving average here, which has capped the upside. But at the moment, I think dollar CAD is going to be very, very difficult to call because the numbers tend to be a little bit spiky. Um, in July, they were they were fairly decent, but in August, they weren't so much. I think the difference with dollar CAD will be um, how the full-time jobs and the part-time job distribution is made up in terms of um, what, what, the, what, what the balance is. If we get an awful lot of uh, full-time jobs added and not a lot of part-time jobs, I would suggest that's positive. If it's vice versa, probably less so. Okay, I've got another 20 seconds to go, so let's quickly do dollar yen. You'll know straight away with respect to dollar yen whether or not it's a good or bad number for the dollar because dollar yen will either drop sharply or it will rise sharply. So I'm going to put a dollar yen chart on and then we can quickly, and I will be quiet now. Average earnings is 2.8, so pretty much in line. 
unemployment rate 3.7 that's quite a good number it's dropped but even though we've seen a drop in the unemployment rate wages have dropped back so that is disappointing non-farm payrolls 134 very disappointing but look at the revision to August there's a big revision higher from 201 to 270 so again it's very very difficult to make any sort of um, really balanced assessment of where we go to here but I would say on the face of it that that is actually dollar negative um, an awful lot of um, an awful lot of stuff was built into this number and actually while the August revision is quite substantial the actual September number is disappointing but September number is disappointing but don't forget that September number could well get revised higher going forward so at the moment the market doesn't really know what to make of this particular number the Canadian jobs report very good number um, 63,000 um, sort of reverses the very disappointing number that we saw in the previous month in August and I think that keeps the probability of a Canadian rate rise very much on the table later this month from the Bank of Canada at the moment as I say I think I would be very surprised if dollar yen goes back above 114 in the short to medium term I could end up wearing that particular prediction but ultimately I don't think there's enough in these numbers to prompt further dollar upside given the weakness of the wages numbers and the fact that the unemployment rate has dropped back to 3.7 percent you would think that if the unemployment rate is falling that wages would go up and that isn't the case and I think this is going to make it very very difficult for the market to really argue with any sense of conviction that the economic picture has changed to any greater or lesser degree so as I say I'm, I'm still of the opinion that this is not a particularly dollar positive number and ultimately I think it's going to be very difficult for the dollar index to take out the highs that we saw earlier this week so where does that leave us where does that leave us well if we basically take this dollar yen chart back here what we found is that we've fallen we've fallen quite a way short of the highs that we saw in November last year around about 114.75 if I can just blow this chart up for you, you can see them there. This, there was a couple of peaks here at 114.75. Here we go. Coming a little bit too much there. So you can see all the way through here, one, two, three, and then you've got these highs here. There's a big, big barrier around about just above 114, and I think it's going to be very, very difficult for the the market to really, I think, take the dollar higher in the short term. Certainly, I think in the context of this week's price action let's just stick a horizontal line in through that and see where it brings us in there we have it so I basically slapped that line in right across there for me I think if you want to get further upside in dollar yen you're going to have to see a significantly more a bullish picture for dollars going forward and we are going above 114 at the moment so certainly getting squeezed looking on the client sentiment sometimes find that's actually a decent indicator of where um, how how clients are positioned in terms of where they think the dollar is going to go and our top clients these are the clients who've been the most profitable over the last three months 42 percent of them are long dollar yen 58 percent of them are short dollar yen these are the cash positions here I find this an incredibly useful tool um, to gauge um, market positioning um, so certainly I think looking at that you can say that the market is marginally short but certainly not aggressively so it can certainly go either way looking at euro dollar and looking at the client sentiment there 78% long euros so I would argue that it's probably going to make it a little bit difficult in terms of the cash position to retest the highs but it certainly doesn't mean that we're going to break out of the range that we've been over the course of the past couple of days so for me with euro dollar looking around about 115 and a half on the top side and around about 114.60 on the downside as I say I don't really see anything in those numbers to drive us out of that range let's see what's happening with US treasury yields if I can just find my Bloomberg chart and then we can see what's happening there and they haven't really moved on the back of those numbers slightly firmer to 
two two basis points, two point three basis points um, from where they closed last night at three twenty one. But again, for me, I don't think there's anywhere near um, enough in those numbers to really suggest that those yields should be going higher anytime soon. So let's just close this down. Let's see how the Canada's let's see how the Canada's reacting to those numbers. If there's any um, market that you guys want me to have a particular look at in the wake of those numbers or completely unrelated market, more than happy to do a little bit of technical analysis and charting on that for you. But certainly looking at dollar CAD, it's a pretty much of a not much in that. Back to where we started really on dollar CAD. Brief, brief dip lower to 129 but now pretty much back where we started, where we started today. And, uh, I, you know, I think that's probably about the extent of it. Being asked about Aussie dollar, I'm still bearish on Aussie dollar. Um, I think while the China trade story continues to play out, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for the Aussie dollar to rally anytime soon. What's quite significant is that we broke below these lows here. If we look at the weekly chart, the direction of travel is even clearer. Um, certainly you can see it there. Um, but ultimately I certainly wouldn't be selling it here. Um, I would certainly be looking to sell Aussie dollar on any rebounds. Um, if I look at uh, a four hour chart, I can see that 71 here is likely to be a fairly decent area to go short or 70, 80. When I was at Commonwealth Bank of Australia a long, long time ago, um, we used to and I used to sit opposite the Aussie trader. Those 80, these 80, 20 levels on the Aussie always used to be fairly decent areas where Aussie corporates used to leave buy and sell orders. Um, used to use, used to have a proliferation of orders around between the figure and 20, and uh, sell orders around the 80 and the figure. So, um, certainly, I think there's potential for us to squeeze back to 80 figure on the Aussie dollar it is looking a little bit oversold on the four hourly chart but certainly on this basis there's certainly no reason for us to think that we won't um, we won't go lower in the short to medium term because I think with the China story still very much front and centre there's no likelihood I think of any agreement between the US and China ahead of the midterms and we also have next week we've got the latest China trade data and I think that could be significant because while the further implementation of tariffs by the US um, in, in July didn't really affect the August numbers that much, we've also got to factor in that towards the end of last month, the extra $200 billion of tariffs went on uh, the last week or two in September. So that could actually affect the numbers for September and those numbers are out on the 12th of October. So pay particular attention to them to see whether or not there's a significant impact to Chinese exports on the back of those numbers. Being asked about the Dow, hopefully that helps by the way. Um, looking at the Dow, um, at the moment slightly more negative because the yields are edging higher. Um, it's now around about 3.22 on the US 10 year. So I think while the while the yields on the US 10 year are edging towards the upper end of their recent range, the Dow will find it difficult to rally. But I always find that as the US starts to go home towards the end of the week, you always get a short squeeze. So I think even if we get a little bit of weakness in the Dow early on, we've not officially opened yet in the US. So US traders, equity traders, won't have the opportunity to react to these numbers um, for at least another hour or so. So I would wait and see with respect to the Dow. We're getting a little bit of weakness at the moment, but certainly I think I would wait to see what what initially happens in the first hour of trading when the New York Stock Exchange opens in around about 50 minutes. But I, I don't expect to see the Dow come crashing off anytime soon. Certainly not, um, certainly not this week. But again, um, famous last words, as they say. Now I've been asked about I've been asked about OMX, so I'm going to see if I can find that on 
the um, I'm assuming you mean the Swedish cash index um, whoever asked me that question and look at the chart <coughs> Okay, so we've got that index there. And again, I mean, it's a similar sort of pattern, really. I think there is a little bit of toppiness in terms of European stock markets at the moment. So hopefully, who's asked for the OMX? I can't, I've got so many questions up here, it's, uh, and I think I've lost them. Yep. Okay, so it's the OMX. So this potentially here could be a double top. We've got the two peaks potentially three peaks there but the bottom of the M and this is an M formation like the letter M up down up down so the bottom of the M is still quite a long way away you know it's back down here at around about 1610 so we've still got another 10 or 15 <laughs> points to go but I think the failure here at 1675 means that we're more than likely going to come back and retest these lows here which would mean that ultimately what we've got here is the potential potential for a double top but at the moment it's not a double top at the moment because we haven't broken out of it you can only have a double top once it's broken and at the moment we're in the middle of it so it's a tra it's, it's a it's a trade the range type of trade until you get a breakout now there's been an awful lot of talk this week about crude oil prices as well being inflationary and certainly I think if you look at crude oil prices and the way they performed over the course of the past few weeks there's certainly I certainly have concerns that they could be inflationary and will crimp consumer spending going forward certainly in, t in the context of emerging markets it's been the pain trade number one next to obviously rising US yields now I'm looking at Brent crude here and I've been of the opinion that we're going to go to $90. Um, you know, I've said that to a number of journalists who've asked me about it, simply on the basis that we broke this particular level, this 61.8 Fibonacci retracement level, on uh, this down move from the highs in 2014 to the lows in 2016. That's 61.8 there. It was a huge level. It was also a huge level through these highs here. The fact that we actually haven't gone back below it yet since we broke above it uh, last week suggests the momentum is there to take it to 90. But something is now making me pause. And the pause for me would be if we start to the, these two peaks here around about 62.4. So with respect to here we've got two peaks just above the highs of around about $87 more importantly if we look at Brent crude sorry WTI crude my mistake um, we have got what I would call a bearish key day reversal or not a key day reversal because we didn't make a new high but we certainly got a bearish engulfing day on the WTI and that gives me a little bit of pause because it suggests to me that maybe the market is overly bulled up. And what's important or significant about this particular failure on WTI was the fact that we've rejected the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement of the entire down move from 107.80 to 2570. So that Fibonacci retracement level has been has rebuffed the price action we've seen a bearish reversal so if we get a rebound in Brent in WTI then any stop loss goes above 76.50 for a move back down to 72 the risk trade here the low risk trade here is to be short with a stop above the previous high for a move back down to the lows around here and this is essentially the way I always look at my trade I look at them in the terms of risk and what's the riskiest trade and where do you put your stop loss so if you're looking to trade euro dollar for example 
and you're looking, for example, uh, looking to play it from the long side, then the right thing to do is to place your stop loss below the two lows here, which currently are around about 114.63. So you put them at around about 114.55 or below that, 114.50. That will probably be the sensible place to put a stop loss if you're looking to play the euro dollar for the long side. However, if you're prepared to run a loss of, say, 50 points, then you then have to work out what the upside to that trade is. And if you're prepared to risk 50 points, then you should be looking to make at least 100, at least double the amount that you're risking. Because on the basis that your average trader is wrong 50% of the time, you'll want the opportunity to come out ahead because no trader no matter how good they are will be right all the time most decent traders will wait for the opportunity for the market to come to them put in their buy trade put in their stop loss trade and then put in their take profit trade so many traders nowadays do not think about what their upside will be they're always thinking about managing the downside without giving in a great deal of thought to what their potential profit will be and I think that if that's a mindset you can get yourselves into when you're trading the markets don't just think about what your downside is think about what your upside is so if you're thinking of a trade of 50 point loss think about okay where's my profit going to be and if my profit's going to be say for example if you're long at 114.80 with a stop loss at 114.50 that's great, 30 points, brilliant. But what's your upside? Well, what's been the high for the last two or three days on Euro dollar? The high has been 115.93 on Wednesday. It was around 115.43 on Thursday. So the big question is, do you think that your profit, if you're long, will take out the highs of yesterday or the previous day? So this is what I want to try and in part get across in terms of thinking about how you set your trade up where's your stop loss where's the support where's the resistance is your target realistic for a profit at the same time as your stop loss is a realistic target so I hope that helps um, if not more than happy to answer any questions that you might have going forward Unless there are any other questions, you can find me on social media at mhewson underscore cmc. Alternatively, if you want to drop me an email at m.hewson at cmcmarkets.com, more than happy to help out in that regard as well. But I cannot and will not give you advice on where to buy and where to sell. Not allowed to do that. Um, I would get into an awful lot of trouble if I did. But hopefully if that's it for everybody that will be good and um, thank you very much for attending and uh, I hope you enjoyed the I hope you enjoyed the webinar